Now, occasionally on The Money Makers, we have guests who bring their PR people. We have guests who bring their bouncers. We have people who bring their security guards and we make them wait outside. But when our guests this evening arrived with a whole team of people, we had no choice but to let them all in the room. While the rest of us were busy worrying about sovereign downgrades, charges and court cases, the public protector's report on state capture, a 16-year-old grade 11 pupil at St. Martin's High School was taking over the world. Well, at least the Google world. Kiara Nergen was inspired by the drought currently gripping South Africa and when she designed a super absorbent substance to retain water in soil so plants can survive with little rain and little water. She's going to have to get this thing monetized fairly soon and get it spread across the country considering the drought that we're facing. This is The Money Makers. Tonight I'm joined by the winner of the Google Science Fair and she got this cool trophy, Kiara Nergen. Alongside her is her mom, Rekha Nergen, a business studies teacher at St. Martin's School in the south of Joburg, Anna Moore all three of them here with us in the Money Makers studio. This is a cool trophy. It's your trophy. You shouldn't really let me touch it. I might break okay. it. <laughs> what did you do to get that? I created a project called, well, it's time. It's titled Fighting Drought with Fruit. And basically it's called Combating Drought with a Low-Cost, Biodegradable, Super Absorbent Polymer made out of orange peels and avocado skins. N you're in grade 11 at school. How do you get that uh, concept? Well, I looked at what was affecting South Africa at the moment, which was drought, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I started, during my holidays, I started looking at what I could do to lessen the impact that the drought had on South Africa's food supply. And from there, I started experimenting. I started looking at super absorbent polymers and what their effects are, if they're biodegradable, and they haven't really been used a lot because they're not biodegradable and they're extremely costly. And I looked at basically taking that and reducing all the negative impacts and making it to be applied in South Africa. Okay, you did that. Mum bought then a pocket of oranges and then another pocket mm -hmm. of oranges. <laughs> uh, and then when her, the local shop ran out of oranges, what did you do? <laughs> well... It didn't take a lot of oranges actually to make the thing it took about for, for my experimenting. I try to keep it as, so for in order for it to be applied throughout South Africa, I wanted to use as little orange peels and avocado mm -hmm. skins as possible. So I didn't want to go overboard in terms of the resources. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be able to be applied. So it didn't take that many. Okay, not too many. You must be relieved because, <laughs> 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 does she do this kind of thing often? I mean, is she a little bit uh, you know, unwieldy when it comes to managing um, her appetite for knowledge and appetite for excitement <laughs> and success? Well, actually this wasn't her first project that she's working was working on when she saw this Google Science Fair uh, the banner drop she came up with hundreds of ideas and from there did you write them all down no because because you know if you don't write them down even at your young age you will forget them <laughs> yeah I, I told my dad about them and then that's when he was like no this is not gonna work that's not gonna work never listen to your dad <laughs> you know, you know, he knows nothing experiment away you went up against other young people your age around the world and they judged you tops what what made them judge you as the standout candidate i think because there hasn't really been a revolutionary a breakthrough with drought and my idea was something that hasn't really been tried obviously super absorbent polymers have been tried but in order to make a positive impact on the soil it hasn't really been tried so I guess it's a new look on things affecting the world. Have companies contacted you and said, let's talk about this thing, let's see whether or not, you remember the Vodacom lesson, you remember the please call me thing? Oh yes. Have you yeah. got good lawyers? So <laughs> I'm in the process of patenting it. I have been approached by a few companies. So it's all in the process at the good, moment. Good, good. But now, this wouldn't have been possible without business studies. And Anna Boy, you and I have <laughs> chatted about this because business, not many schools do business studies as a formalized course. Is it part of the curriculum or is it something that you do as an extra at St. Martin's? It's part of the curriculum. Where it's does it fit into the curriculum? Is it the kids who can't do math that do business science? <laughs> 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 um, well, it is a subject. I'm surrounded. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's generally the first choice for most students after the languages, right? Yeah. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> the answer is yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just a subject that is chosen and um, it operates within our normal school working. <coughs> because it's not the first time we've come across each other. I did a, a kidpreneurs yes, contest right. a year yes. ago yes. Uh, and you were one of the finalists in, yeah. in, in that particular context. Are all of the kids who are in this room encouraged actively to run businesses and to, to come up with concepts and plans? Is that question for me? Or That's for you. Oh, for me. Oh. They have no <laughs> microphones. They're, 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 they're just the wallpaper this evening, um, unfortunately. 
They are definitely entrepreneurship is one of the biggest sections in in you know in our, from grade ten to twelve. Um, we encourage it because there is such a problem in South Africa with unemployment. So it's difficult to encourage entrepreneurship in the classroom. Like mm. you will go out, you will. But I think just the notion of nothing is impossible. Try everything, um, and then just studying. You know, I think Kiara, her whole science—I can't even say the word she said—but the whole science thing was, you know, the whole macro environment that we look at in business. What are our problems? And mm -hmm. I think we spoke about droughts often, you know. Mm -hmm. And she looked at it and she took it to a new level. We have a problem, drought. It's mm -hmm. a—it's in this macro environment. How does it affect business? What can I do to change it? And mm -hmm. she obviously. You know. She cracked it. <laughs> she, she did a good job. No, but now, where does your responsibility start and stop? Because suddenly you've got a star student who wins this for science, but she's part of your, your business faculty as well. Do you, are you part of the process of ensuring she doesn't get ripped off? Oh, you mean now that she's... Yeah, now that she's that famous. Does yeah. she still talk to you, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> um, She's doing this whole patenting thing on her own with her parents, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, so but it's, it's again, do you see any other potential in mm. your class There's for great ideas to monetize. Here and I see 17 ideas. And are they good ideas? <laughs> Not all. <laughs> <laughs> we try and try again. How many ideas did you have? Yeah. yeah. But it, it's absolutely pivotal. In terms of the curriculum though, mm. very few schools offer business mm -hmm. lessons, business teaching as a course at school. How yes. do we take what is being achieved at St. Martin's and multiply it across schools? Has Panyas Lusufi been in touch yet? Mm. The MEC no. for Education? He has no. not. Would you like your cell phone number? Because <laughs> I can give it to you. How do I have we it do it? Yeah. <laughs> so do we start with the IEB and then go into government schooling? or? Mm. But are you, so you're part of the IEB mm. then, you're part of the Independent Examination yes. Board. Um, but this is something that's not available then in, in, government school, in, in government schools. Should it be? Absolutely. I'm only familiar with IEB. Mm. Um, and I think with the IEB, they, you know, they really have a hands-on approach. We have, as I said earlier, the, the case studies which we study. Businesses come on board, they try and assist us to understand business. Even just before this, we had a, a talk with Ralph downstairs, with JSE. It, it's so important to bring theory to life. How, how do you go from this, which is, I mean, you're 17 years old-ish? 16. 16, beg your pardon, don't mean to age you prematurely. <laughs> um, you're 16 years old, what is the next step for you? Um, hopefully I could study overseas. That's probably one something I'm looking into. Because the prize um, is big. Yeah. It's $50,000 worth of what? Educational scholarship. And you can use that anywhere you anywhere, like? Anywhere, yeah. So I could go to a South African university. Would you bother right now? Mm. I don't mean to drag you into politics, <laughs> but right now. <laughs> but, uh, as a young, but as a young South African who's achieving massively with an option to use that money to go anywhere you like, is South Africa still on your agenda? No. Mm. It, it and that's tragic. Be, yeah. I would probably go overseas and maybe get the product in commercialization and get it out there, you know, helping people. I mean, and, and is that, would you have done that regardless of fees must fall, regardless of the breakdown in universities anyway? Um, without getting the educational scholarship, mm. fees must fall or not, I would probably still have gone to Wits mm -hmm. University. But with the scholarship and the fees must fall and everything, I think it's not the best option. And with Google on your CV and the fact yeah. that they're treating you seriously, yeah. this gives you uh, a stepping stone <coughs> that you might not otherwise have had. Yeah, definitely. Where, where are you favoring? The US is the, the hotbed of everything. Yes, um, probably MIT or Caltech or one of the sciences. I don't want you to aim too low. <laughs> <laughs> don't aim too low. Whatever you do, don't aim too low. <laughs> have you had a call from Elon Musk yet to say, hello? No, I was actually talking to my friends the other day where we sit at break and I was asking them if they knew who Elon Musk was and they didn't know who he was. Hey, so who are these people? <laughs> Not these guys, these guys all know, I'm sure. But your other friends. So I asked them and then they said, no, they don't know who Elon Musk is, so. Do we need more business heroes, do you think? Probably. <laughs> do we need more South African business heroes? Yes. How do we get more South African business heroes, Anamoy? Are you, gr are you creating them? <laughs> I hope so. I think, yeah, I just think that they, um, I, I think we underestimate the power of these 16 and 17 year olds, you know, I think we must throw more at them because they're capable of so much. And even in our class, it's, it's usually quite loud and rioty because everybody has a question, everybody wants to know. 
which is good. What is, what is the thrust? This is a very practical, mm. problems-based solution that Kiara has developed. So many of the businesses that we see being developed in South Africa are app-based, and everybody yes. is trying to create the next fintech miracle. Mm -hmm. what, exactly. is, what is the key trend in this class? What are, what are, what are, young, are, are, young, are young entrepreneurs more problem solvers than they are as a real-world problem solvers rather than trying to get rich out of fintech? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> what are the projects telling you? I think, um, I'm looking at them all and they're like, what are you going to say, ma'am? <laughs> I think with, even with this, it, it doesn't have to be rocket science, even though this is, but it's what are our problems, you know? How do we solve them? We are the next generation. If unemployment is a big deal, corruption is a big deal, all our South African issues, how do we solve it? As are you guys going to solve them? Yes. yes. <coughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Who, whose trophy is this next year, by the way? Is, <laughs> is, anybody, is anybody committing to fight the good fight to, get, to bring this trophy back again next year? Anyone? <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah, a little bit of anyone. ambition. A little bit of ambition. Nobody likes to put their hand up. But it really is. It's a magnificent achievement, mm. and you've done so very, very well. And Thank I'm you. very pleased that you have been named the Google Science Fair 2016 Grand Prize winner. $50,000 of academic scholarship, which yeah. you can utilize anywhere in the world. You might aim low and go to MIT or whatever <laughs> that place is. Are you proud, Mom? Extremely, extremely. But it saddens me that, you know, Kara's come up with a concept that's going to revolutionize the world in terms of food supply and all that. And, and South Africa hasn't come to the, to the party. Yeah, especially like government. And it's government, go no. Good policy. Oh. Nobody's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, the minister, now Lady like Pandor hasn't picked no, up the phone. Not really. No, no. Ridiculous. And, and, and it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I agree. And then you get like international governments that are uh, that are interested in the in in the concept, yeah. and South Africa is way behind. Yeah, so what more do you need? But it, uh, that, that's the problem with the ecosystem. I mean, that's the, the term people use. The business ecosystem isn't yes. supportive, sufficiently supportive yeah. of that. Yes. Now, Lady Pandor, you have a lot to answer for. Uh, we'll yes, be picking up the do. phone. You now, do. Lady, <laughs> and we'll be saying, Minister, why have you not phoned Kiara? <laughs> this has been your Money Makers. We've got a whole bunch of future Money Makers in studio, a live studio audience, courtesy of the Grade 11 pupils at the magnificent St. Martin's High School in the south of Johannesburg. My thanks to Kiara Nergen, the winner of the Google Science Fair Award, $50,000 worth of academic excellence. Not going to be spent here. Also, my thanks to her mom, Rekha Nergen, and also to business studies teacher at St. Martin's School, Anna Moore, who's doing a marvellous job of helping young entrepreneurs navigate a very complicated world in a country where... There just isn't that much support for kids like this. Other young and amazing South Africans on Future Money Makers, until then, have a very good evening, knowing that this is what the future looks like. <laughs> now, either you're inspired by that or you're terrified. Should they be inspired or terrified? Inspired. 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 Thank you very much. Good night.